Greetings, my fellow free love seven thinkers. This is LL3's newest podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today's date is Thursday, November 16th, 2017. It's cooling down in Fort Lauderdale. It's going to be this late Thursday night. So I do a show, go, what the hell, why not? A little bit quiet. And um, nothing really exciting to say. But here's some people across the river partying a little bit. But um, other side, south end, pretty tamed. So, um, I want to say what the hell, let's just start off on some interesting things. This one, when I talk, re- narrate, came from missionliberty.worldpress.com. It's written by a gentleman named Charles Van Vick, which he, um, first heard of him, got a, a read a book called, uh, actually heard him do an interview with Larry Pratt. I had him talk about his book, Shooting Back, The Right and Duty of Self-Defense. And he'll explain anything in the Christian and Biblical point of view, what their duties are. And it doesn't matter what your faith is. This is a very horrific story and very interesting as well. It was based on the St. James Church Massacre that happened on July 25th, 1993. So, of course, the, 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 he has a link for the books and all that. You can, you can check it out yourselves. So I'm going to be um, actually to have his little intake on weighing in on Texas Massacre. So, and as it reads here, Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. That's a Psalm 82, verse 4. The attack. My friend Joel and I had just returned to town of Victoria Falls after ministering at a retreat for parents in Harang, Main Camp, Zimbabwe, when the tragic news came through. An attack by gunmen on the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas. He opened fire on a congregation where his former in-laws worship. 27 people died in the attack, including an unborn baby, and another 20 were injured. When the attacker exited the church, an armed neighbor, 55-year-old Stephen Williford, shot him to stop any further carnage. The attacker managed to get into his vehicle and took off. Williford then jumped into a car of Johnny Langendorf. Together, they chased the shooter down into a nearby county where he ran off the road. Authorities said the attacker was found dead inside the vehicle, apparently from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. A Christian response. Williford made the comment, I think, I think my God, my Lord, protected me and gave me the skills to do what needed to be done. What a humble way to describe such heroic, heroic action. Have the glory to whom it belonged. To those who reject self-defense, play into the hands of the lawbreakers. They encourage the wicked to take advantage of them by creating a safe environment for the attacker. Our Christian duty is to make the working environment of the bad guy as dangerous as possible. The political left may find this fact an inconvenient truth, but the only person who can stop a bad guy with a gun is the good guy with a gun. Apparently, in today's times, this is treated as a controversial statement. But it's self-evident that unarmed victims are pretty helpless. It is a reality not lost on the killers. Christians are not called to be doormats for the wicked. In fact, the Bible teaches us that, quote, like a muddied spring or a polluted fount- fountain is r- a righteous man who gives way before the wicked. That's from Proverbs 25, verse 26. Surely we are given way before the wicked if we choose to remain unarmed and unable to protect our families, friends, and churches. Maybe it's time for us to call a spade a spade and clearly state that those Christians who are not prepared to protect their loved ones from violent attacks are shirking their biblical duty. Indeed, it is a duty. Christians don't just have a right to self-defense. They have a biblical duty to protect the innocent. That is also why all gun owners should stand for the protection of their right to keep to, to bear arms and to the life in the womb. These two positions, among the hottest topics on the planet, are interdependent. Before require the defense of innocent life against the acts of violence and evil. I was told by a South African that home invaders raped his wife in front of him in his own home. He claimed that he could do was pray. 
he was against my call for armed resistance in such circumstances. He thought that this stamp was more spiritual than even the Bible. I, I had a Christian duty to point him out that this sin of inaction was certainly spiritual. It's a following spirit of fear. We know that, quote, God gave us the spirit not to fear, but a power and love and self-control. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. We are commanded to love our wives like Christ loved the church. We must be prepared to die for our wives, not to stand by and watch while she is being raped. We must do everything in our power to defend her, even if it means we might lose our life while defending her. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and give, gave himself up of hers for her. Ephesians 5 verse 25 all life is precious because we are made in the image of God and because he has created us we have to live by his rules they are not merely suggestions we might only take life when he he says we can and defending life abides with such just an occasion Exodus chapter 22 verses 2 through 3 makes that clear makes this very clear are you ready? Some Christians appear to have adopted the pagan fallacy of animism, extremely prominent here in Africa. This belief ascribes a soul to everything, even inanimated objects, and grants supernatural power to such objects. It claims that evil lurks in things, guns rather than people. Demonizing inanimated objects, guns, make no sense. Guns can be used for good or evil. The heart of the handler is what makes the difference. Dr. John Lott in his book, War on Guns, explains and shows in detail how killers choose gun-free zones. Mass public shooters avoid a place where victims can defend themselves. After all, how quickly people can arrive with a, with a gun to stop the attack reduces the number of likely victims and the publicity that the killer will be able to get. Commander of the terrorist attackers on our church in 1993 agreed on the issue when he admitted that they thought that our church was a gun-free zone. He continued by saying, I had a surprise for his cardres when I returned fire. Are you ready to defend your family and friends? For my friends in the West, this was once a distant, abstract concern, a danger restricted to father-flung locales and commonplace in disorganized developing nations. The latter fact is sadly still true for my countrymen and I. The former sense of contentment and complacency regarding personal safety, we know all too well, no longer resonates with reality in the West. It will behoves all men of God to know the biblical answer to this question and prepare accordingly. And he gives an interview, Bob Ernerth from WND kindly interviewed me on the same topic on Christian who disrupted 1993 church attack ways in on Texas massacre. <coughs> and I say this, I've heard his interviews, I've read his books and watched some of his videos and him and I are Facebook pen pals, by the way. And he's absolutely correct. It doesn't matter what your belief system is. We all have obligations and duties. Even a Church of Satan member will attest to that. On right to self-defend them, defend themselves, families, and loved ones. Regardless, it is a natural born right regardless where you're from and the people in the West especially in the United States when I hear these rants on Facebook about guns this guns that we need tougher gun laws and these both bend over bottom politicians in Washington DC wants to make a difference with the penile microphone rhetoric or sweet pie purebred syndrome on dog only works in cartoons not the real world that is how I look at things in this area so this is how it always observes and 
study the past as well is today's greatest teacher. In addition, talking about my brothers in the United States, technically the police aren't obligated to protect you as an individual. Look up sovereign immunity and tort liability or anything equivalent to that in your statutes, the laws of your own state. You'll be surprised. So this is why, my friends, we all have obligations, our natural born rights, regardless of what you look like, where you're from, what your creed is, etc. Fact is, a lot of people, a lot of these shooters love soft targets. Look what happened at Pulse Nightclub in Orlando or Belle Isle to be exact. That was a far and free zone. Look what happened at San Bernardino. Another far and free zone. We can go on and on and on. And here's another thing. The airplanes in 9-11 that happened in September 11, 2001 were in far and free zones. If you haven't learned from that, then you're duped, dumbed down, and stagnant. To all you folks that claim to be Christians, if you still don't believe in this, you contradicted your faith. And with all due respect, and a good, all due respect, you're nothing. You have attributes of jack lanterns, frauds, posers. Just think before you speak. That includes the people in the Judaic faith as well. Self-defense is legit. That's why some people claim to be Jewish and they say we need tougher firearm laws. We have to make it harder for people, we want people to register and all that. You're nothing more than Jinos. Jews or Judaic in name only. It's not being any Semitic. So don't even go there. Mr. Vemic, thank you for your viewpoint. It's always been powerful, effective, and always give you eternal homage. I'm not going to go too crazy today. Next one here came out yesterday as well. Natural News. Trump nominates big pharma executive to run HHS. Proving government has hopelessly corrupted by the drug industry. This is by Ethan Huff. As it says here, there's a new chief in town, Alex Azar. Should he receive confirmation from Congress, he will soon take over the head of the United States Department of Health and Human Services. How excited, huh? But not everyone is happy with this decision because Azar is a former president of Lilly, USA. The American arm of drug giant Ellie Lilly and Company, a well-known pharmaceutical industry lobbyist, industry lobbyist, which just goes to show that nothing has, nothing ever really changes in Washington D.C. President Trump chose Azar as a replacement for Dr. Tom Price, who resigned from being head of the HHS back in September after a series of stories was published showing that Price had abused his privilege. But the administration, by using private charter jets and government planes rather than commercial planes to conduct his business. What a glam boy, right? Yeah. The president has dubbed Azar as being a star for better health care and has promised that he will work toward lowering prescription drug prices and implementing more health care reforms. Article 1, Section 7 can work on that. To fund the federal government when it comes to health. But Azar's direct ties to the drug industry have many health freedom advocates concerned that it will be just more of the same. A graduate of Yale Law School, Azar is hardly new to D.C., having served as general counsel and then as deputy secretary of the HHS during the administration of Jorge W. Bush. Azar has also, in the past, represented the drug industry before members of Congress whom he was trying to lobby for legislation designed to benefit Big Pharma. Azar spent nearly a decade at Indianapolis-based El Lilly, where he rose and became president of the pharmaceutical giants 
U.S. operations before leaving earlier this year, writes Adam Cancrin and Sarah Carolyn Smith for Politico. Knowing that former Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, independent from Vermont, is planning to vigorously oppose Azar's nomination because of his drug industry ties. Can you blame him? No. Alex Azar said he will continue to fight Obamacare. Well, Azar is earning considerable praise among hardline conservatives. However, his position with regard to the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, Azar will be directly responsible for overseeing Obamacare implementation and function. Though he doesn't agree with the legislation at all and has indicated publicly that he believes it is a failing completely on his own terms. Like Trump, President Trump, Azar has hoped to see Obamacare scrapped entirely with the repeal and replace alternative bill. But as many natural news readers well know, establishment Republicans like Arizona Senator John McCain made sure that this didn't, didn't, didn't succeed, which means parts of Obamacare are still in use while others, including individual mandate, are reportedly in the process of being scrapped. Azar is also unhappy with the way that Obamacare's expansion of Medicaid coverage has progressed, explaining to the media that he would rather see government money sent through private sector vehicles in order to deliver health care to more Americans. So while he may not be the top pick in terms of his past positions at Ellie Lilly, and the appearance of revolving door politics, as usual, that this creates he could be helpful in eventually achieving a complete dismantling of Obamacare. As former Deputy Secretary of Health and Human Services and private sector executive, Alex Azar has a qualification and experience to get results, believes Senator Lamar Alexander of Tennessee, who currently serves as the Chairman of the Senate Health Committee. The Senate Health Committee will promptly schedule a hearing on his nomination. He had about his intention to see what Azar receives confirmation. The corrupt big farmer, farmer runs deep to keep us with the latest developments in the file then, and they how they affect health, health freedom. Visit DangerousMedicine.com. There's multiple articles you can see for yourselves. Good grief. More garbage as usual, right? Propaganda 101, my brothers and sisters. More big farmer humanoids trying to run our lives. How conceptual is it? Is that right? Look, scrap the damn thing, defund it, put a, and get the federal government out of the healthcare industry. What's so hard about that? And of course, get rid of the lobbyists as well. A bunch of Huey and Deweys anyway. Nothing really new. All right. Finally, there's some interesting news here. It came from the Department of Justice. Came out today. This here, former Rutherford County, Tennessee Sheriff, Chief Administrative Deputy, sentenced on federal corruption charges. Former Sheriff previously sentenced to 50 months. Sheriff's uncle also sentenced in scheme. A former Rutherford County Sheriff. Chief Deputy of Administration was sentenced today to 15 months in prison for operating a private electronic cigarette company in the county jail for personal gain. Announcing Acting Assistant Attorney General Kenneth A. Blanco of the Justice Department of Criminal Division and U.S. Attorney Don Cochran of the Middle, Middle District of Tennessee, Joe L. Russell II, 50, of Bur Murfreesboro, Tennessee, was sentenced today by Senior U.S. District Judge Marvin E. Aspen of the Northern District of Illinois, sitting by designation in the Middle District of Tennessee, who also ordered Russell to pay $52,500 of restitution and to forfeit $52,234.41, an amount equal to all proceeds that he received from jail SIGs. Russell, along with former Rutherford County Sheriff Robert F. Arnold, 41 of Murs Free Borough, Tennessee, and Arnold's uncle John Vanderveer, 59 of Marietta, Georgia, were named in a 14 count indictment in May 2016, charging them with honest services, fraud, mail fraud, wire fraud, bribery concerning federal programs, 
extortion under color of official right, obstruction of justice, and conspiracy. According to his plea, Russell admitted to forming jail sigs along with Arnold and Van Der, Van Der Veer in 2013, using Arnold's official position as sheriff of Rutherford County to benefit jail sigs by allowing the company's electronic cigarettes to come into Rutherford County Jail as non-contraband and to be distributed by county employees taking steps to disguise their involvement in the company and misrepresenting the benefits that Rutherford County was supposedly receiving from jail cigs. <laughs> Arnold pleaded guilty in January 2017 and was sentenced in May 2017 to 50 months in prison in order to pay $52,500 in restitution and to forfeit $66,790. Benavir was sentenced in September 2017 to one year plus one day in prison for attempting to tamper with a key witness in the investigation by asking her to destroy incriminating documents related to the scheme. Benavir was ordered to pay $52,000 $500 in restitution. The FBI and the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation investigated the case. Trial attorneys Mark J. Capoletti, Cipolletti of the Criminal Division's Fraud Section and Andrew Liang Lang of the Criminal Division's Public Integrity Section and U.S. Attorney Cecile W. Vanderveer of the Middle District of Tennessee prosecuted the case. Van Denver. Cesar W. Van Denver. Van Denver. Sorry about that. Well, when you screw around, take stuff for granted, expect blowback, right? Absolutely. What can you say? I do find that really hilarious. But you know what? Corruption doesn't pay. They should do it to the Federal Reserve. Come on, guys. Stop playing with the pencil necks. You should get, you should get the sons of bitches in Washington, D.C. Come on. Where's the testicles, yeah? But everything's, everything's, everything's going to be done by steps. So that's how it goes. Stay vigilant, my friends. All right. That is all. Thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share through the social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you want to say something that's interesting and may want to check out, whatever you do, please address your correspondence with decorum. You can hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freedoms Network. Scene.life, which I have some issues with. Hopefully, it'll be done soon. Minds.com, FutureNet.club, Patreon.com forward slash look the third. If you want to be a donor, patron, all that would be great. You hit me on Gab, GAB.AI. That's more of a freedom, freedom, freedom of speech version of Twitter. All right. In addition, you can email me at lookyluck number three at gmail.com or to cryptic ones, lookyluck numbers zero three at protonmail.com. All right, my friends, that's all for now. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that demonic resistance is healthy for soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.